The peasants came like swarms of flies and bust the name of God a hundred times to paralyze the evil one. The news of the scorpion bite spreads like wild fire and practically the entire community rushes into the family house of the speaker. The neighbors are mostly peasants. Peasants are small-time agriculturists. Peasants are agricultural laborers. Peasants are owners of tiny land holdings. The poet compares the peasants who rush into the family house of the speaker with flies, with swarms of flies, with groups of flies. They utter the name of God in a low, continuous murmur and the sound that they make is comparable to the sound produced by an insect. The poet says that they bust the name of God a hundred times with the intention of paralyzing the evil one. The evil one is of course in a Jewish context Satan. In a Jewish context the devil, the arch enemy of God. But a secondary interpretation could be that the evil one is a scorpion. Perhaps the peasants see the scorpion as a representative of the devil. Needless to say, the poet has already thrown such a hint. He speaks of the diabolic tale of the scorpion. It is very significant that though the peasants invoke the name of God and desire to paralyze Satan, the poet compares them with swarms of flies and states that they bust the name of God. In the Old Testament, Beelzebub is the lord of the flies and Beelzebub is a major devil. Sometimes Beelzebub is identified with Satan himself. What is the poet trying to convey here? This is a passage loaded with hidden significance. The poet seems to suggest that there is a substantial quantum of duplicity in their religious identity, in the religious identity of the peasants. The peasants invoke the name of God and desire to paralyze the evil one. But they are in fact closer to the devil than to God. You must remember that 
This is a Beni Israel community and many elements which are completely contrary to the teachings of the Old Testament have crept into the lives of the members of the community, have crept into the beliefs of the members of the community and thus the peasants have moved away from God and are now closer to devil, to the devil than to God. With candles and with lanterns throwing giant scorpion shadows on the sun-baked walls, they search for him. He was not found. They clicked their tongues. The peasants launch a massive operation to locate the scorpion. The hut is an unelectrified building. And so the peasants use candles and lanterns in order to find the scorpion. These candles and lanterns succeed in creating shadows on the mud walls of the hut. And these are huge shadows. And these shadows look like scorpions to the speaker who is a child. I would like to bestow some attention to this. After all is said and done, it is only a small incident. A scorpion bites a woman. But the incident is blown all out of proportion in the mind of the speaker who is a child. The incident is hyperbolized in the mind of the speaker and it leaves an indelible impression in the mind of the speaker and this impression, this imprint ultimately acts as the inspiration for the poem that the speaker comes to write decades later. The operation is unsuccessful. The scorpion hunt ends in abject failure. He was not found. They searched for him. He was not found. I would like to point out again that the poet does not write they searched for it. The poet does not write it was not found. The poet wants to strengthen the identity of the scorpion, strengthen the aura around the identity of the scorpion. They click their tongues. You click your tongue when you are disappointed. One clicks one's tongue when one wants to react negatively to something. The peasants are disappointed that their massive operation, that their massive scorpion hunt has ended in failure and so they click their tongues.